Hi everybody, welcome back to Pagan's Reading Nook. My name is Pagan, and today I am joined by a debut author who I am super excited to have on the show, and that is Eden Knox. Eden is the author of Tripping for Number 68, which goes live on August 8th, 2023, hopefully, uh, barring any, you know, complications. But as of right now, that is the release date. Eden, welcome to the show! Thank you for having me. This is going to be so much fun. First one, even. I know. I'm, I'm, I get to be your podcast person that's first. Woo! Yay! Oh, be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so prior to the show, Aiden and I have already made very good friends with each other. We have talked about all sorts of cool stuff. But we're going to dive straight into your book. And this is a hockey romance, correct? It is. Yes. And um, we are excited for the hockey romances. I am a loving per well, I am a person who loves hockey. That's what I'm saying. Um, and yes. I love the hockey romances. I have read many at this point and plan to read many, many more because I don't know what it is about the hockey, but whew, yes, more please. So let's talk about tripping for number 68. How did it come into being? Well, um, so also Longtime hockey fan. Um, <laughs> I I can vouch. I I am not just a newcomer to the hockey scene. Like oh, you know, um, I had my heart broken by Yaromir Yager when I was like fifteen. So oh, <laughs> he he got traded to the Capitals, <laughs> <laughs> and that hurt far more than any boy band breaking up. Um, <laughs> serious. you are a diehard hockey fan which is awesome which makes for even better writing because you know the game it it helps it definitely helps um i tried to walk this fine line with my book with all right putting in hockey details while at the same time not alienating everybody where they're like what are you talking about no these things do happen um, but yeah, so like old, old, old Pittsburgh Penguins fan, um, also a Columbus Blue Jackets fan, which apparently means I'm like, you know, I'm an anomaly because they're supposed to be mortal enemies, but all I can see is a Y choose. Oh, of. hey. I mean, that's the way to go. You know, enemies I to mean, lovers too. Absolutely. I go to a, if I go to a Blue Jackets game because they are closer. Then and the penguins happen to play. I'm happy. I am a winner, no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, so it works out fabulous. Um, so yeah, um, hockey is my jam. Uh, football's also my jam, and I'm not. I may or may not have a little like plot bunny that's floating around that's football based because, yeah, um, but. Like, yeah, hockey's always been a thing. And it's like, wouldn't it be cool if I wrote a book that kind of tied all of my likes into one little happy book? And, of course, then I realized there's kind of a lot out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, w I won't say that's not slightly. Um, uh, like, it's a little a little bit like, oh, I'm, I'm jumping into the deep end here because it, it's already... The pool is full. The pool is full, <laughs> but you know what? It's okay because that just gives us more opportunities to dive into books that we love and the genres that we love. And there are a lot of hockey people out there that will read anything and everything to do with hockey. So you have an audience out there that's just waiting. I'm, I'm hoping so. And then it's like on the, on the other side of it is, okay, so I enjoy hockey. I obviously enjoy romance because... I am, I'm a bookworm raccoon. Give me all of the trash, all of it. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I don't care how bad it is. I want all of it. So it's like my little like Venn diagram of hockey and romance. And then add in like a sprinkling of like letter Kenny chirps. Okay. Which you know, because love that back and forth thing. Um, 
Kate Prada is highly looking forward to this because she wanted like Shorzy level of chirps with a romance book. And I'm hoping I hit the note. Um, it was my goal uh, because I love all of that. Mm-hmm. And like, I just want to put it all into all into the one book that I would want to read because they all, everybody always says, write the book that you want to read. That's definitely the way that a lot of books come into being. That's for sure. So here we go. Here we have um, Elliot, who's our, our main male character. He's, he was supposed to be a bad boy. He did not listen. (laughs) (laughs) He, um, Instead of be- giving me that bad boy energy that I wanted, he instead gave me golden retriever energy. So um, he was a golden retriever that needed to be trained. <laughs> yes, yeah. and most definitely. And then our our female main character Ronnie or um, Veronica, um, she <laughs> she only lets her friends. And people she's cool with call her Ronnie. And poor Elliot is not on the list. (laughs) (laughs) He's not allowed to call her Ronnie. (laughs) He doesn't know why. (laughs) But um, they, she, she's in PR. She's trying to fix all of the, all of the fun crap that he keeps bringing up and you know, all of the dumb things he ends up doing because he he just kind of skips along through life like, this is fun! And it's like, yeah, you can't really do things like that because public image counts. Um, <laughs> which is where Ronnie comes into play. Ronnie is trying to fix his image. Um, and it's like, don't do stupid stuff. Come on. Um, and of course, they have to work very closely together they're forced into this proximity of you know workplace and forced proximity i'm hitting all the good trope notes here can't you tell Mm -hmm. um and the more they hang out the more it's like okay maybe you're not as bad as all that you're kind of cute and all of that so then they they kind of end up together as one does because it would be a romance novel otherwise (laughs) And um, even though uh, the biggest reason why she had to take him on as a project was his ex-girlfriend sold pictures of his junk to tabloids. Oh. Um, yeah. It's like, you know, he thought it was a good idea at the time. They <laughs> always do until it bites right. them in the ass. Exactly. So now she has to go through, clean up his image because all people can see are big scandal. And um, it it was just a fun time. It was so much fun to it kind of like like build a great this. Book. And it's not. It's actually going to be book one in a series. Oh, very nice. Because of course you can't just write one book. They're like Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> like i thought i was only gonna get to use that with the actual chip and with tattoos but no mm-hmm. <laughs> writing books also once you pop you can't stop um yep so we've got a couple of other relationships that you can see starting in tripping and they're all they're both going to get their own um hopefully in the next year That will be very awesome. I'm excited for it. I'm super excited to read the book, obviously. Um, And the the cover is just gorgeous. Um, Now, that was the cover was created by another Romance Riot creator slash author. Yeah. um, Rose Johnson, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, Oh, my goodness. Everybody needs to get a cover from Rose. I swear. Um, And that one, like it started off very off the cuff just kind of I am not artistic Mm -hmm. I mean I can write (laughs) I can I can give you a visual but to put it into something you can see and make it make sense maybe not my high point so I did the canva thing because 
that's what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, we start off with, let me throw these stock photos together and see what sticks. Um, So I had built this thing and it was kind of messy and it needed a lot of work. It really did. And um, Roz looked at it and was like, hey, uh, can I play with that? Famous last words. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and, And she did. I mean... Like, I, I want to say over the course of, like, 45 minutes or so, um, my cover came into being. Like, from this is what I started with to well, let me play with a little. And then it was like, wait, let me play with the font. And, okay, yeah, here we go. And I've I've gotten some great feedback off of it. So, um, oh, yeah, 10 out of 10 would highly recommend um, anyone that's looking for, um, for cover work, um, her main author or the main design page is Melting Rose Designs mm-hmm. on, um, TikTok as well as I believe on Insta. Um, but yes, um, pre, she's got some pre-mades, um, she does custom, it's, yeah, and then <laughs> as, as we tend to do, us creative types, it's like, all right, you know, all right, cover, cool. And then it's like, who's doing your formatting? It's like, uh, formatting? What's it's that? Like, that's that's a thing? I, I didn't know I had to do that, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I remember those I, days when I first started my books as well. Yeah. It's like, how do you format? How do I do that? Cool. Yeah, what what is this formatting thing you speak of? <laughs> um. So then that kind of evolved into um, she's got um, software that she wanted to play with and see see how it worked. And it was like, so um, I can't, can I format you? So that way I get experience with this and I can play with it and have like a reason to, please. Um, so yes. Um, <laughs> and she's gone through and all of my fun little like so okay baby author fun because baby authors bring along their own brand of fun Mm -hmm. Um, I now know um that hitting tab is not the same as an indent it looks the same but it is not the same um I now know that um m dashes can be They can look however you'd like them to look with spaces and whatnot, but you really need to pick one before you get too far into it. Because when you have 280 pages and um, your ADHD brain puts lots of M dashes in places and (laughs) ellipses, um, your proofreader and formatter will thank you if you pick a style and go with it. Mm Mm-hmm. That is very true. And Lessons learned. <laughs> you know, that's the thing about being, you know, a new author. There's such a huge learning curve that you have that, you know, when somebody's like, oh, I'm going to write a book. And it's like, cool. Have you thought about X, Y, and Z and all of the other letters that go with that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you- and that long laundry list of things you have to do because, you know, writing a book, that's the easy part. Everything after that is the hard part. And oh, so, yeah. you know, making sure that your cover is done, making sure your formatting is done, making sure that you've had 20,521 edits done mm-hmm. because, you know, that's how many is required. No, actually, it's not how many is required, but that's how many it feels <laughs> <It's> like. <a laughs> <lot>. <laughs> And then making sure that your promos are done, making sure that you're advertising. I mean, God, it's a lot. Mm-hmm. It is a lot. It is a full time. Literally, you know, being an author, they authors tend to often work full-time jobs in addition to writing their books but being an author is a full-time job because you have all these other things that you have to do to successfully market your book and even then sometimes it's not 100 percent successful but you're still getting it out there and sometimes the first book obviously doesn't take off the way that you want it to but it takes off after you've published book three and you're like where were you guys when i marketed book one (laughs) exactly (laughs) so it's it's a the whole process and you know mm-hmm. for anybody who's listening you know if that's something that you're wanting to do write the book do it anyway 
it's going to be a struggle and it's going to be tough, but you know what? Write the book anyway. And then go join the Romance Riot Discord because they will help yes. you. <laughs> oh my God. If it was not for, if it wasn't for finding the Romance Riot, I don't know if I would be at this point, to be totally honest. And I love every single person that's in there. Um, Kate has been like the biggest cheerleader. She is the biggest cheerleader for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, Sherry. Oh, yeah. I have to give props to um, Sherry L. Williams. She's proofreading. She's proofreading my book. She's also proofreading, I think, about a half dozen other books all at the same time. Lord have mercy on her eyeballs. They're going to start melting and bleeding out of her face. Um, I felt horrible for her Friday because Friday we're trying to like get my get my stuff ready because um yeah, other baby let's baby author lessons learned. Um deadlines, while they may help your brain kind of keep things straight, you shouldn't really commit to solid deadlines until you are fully edited, proofed, ready then set your good big deadlines and public stuff because I kind of did it backwards um and I and I set dates before I was ready and so she's trying to get me proofread so I can upload the pdf and we had a moment of you know what let's take a step back let's let's wait a little bit before we go live um, make sure we have enough passes because yes that's important. And she has been so incredibly patient with me. <laughs> um, because baby authors are a br whole new level of chaos and hijinks. Um, <laughs> and I can true. see it. <laughs> so now it's like, okay, so um, book one, we're almost done with. Actually, Sherry should be... Um, as we are speaking right now, I believe she was doing final pass today. Um, and then I'm doing, you know, one more go through of everything that she had in there and handing off to Roz. So then tomorrow morning, Roz can start formatting and get both of my formats done because ebooks are a separate format from mm -hmm. paperback. And that's even separate from hardcover, if I remember right, but I'm not I'm not at a hardback level just yet. <laughs> and I know this. <laughs> um, but um, paperback and ebook, okay, we're, we'll start small, start here. And um, so then that should all be ready because Amazon wants you to upload your PDF for ebooks by um, 72 hours prior mm -hmm. to when you went live. Um, so I have until this coming Friday. Yay. Um, it was supposed to be last Friday and it was like, while we can, we probably shouldn't. Um, I have a notebook full of lists of things that I now know and things that I need to take under advisement in the future. <laughs> <laughs> um, book two is going to be go smoother because of things that I'm learning from book one. Yes. So um, that's and it's an added bonus, but yeah, Sherry immediately kind of jumped in uh, with, you know, because of course these things like editing, formatting, proofreading, uh, cover art, if somebody's going to do it for you, there's usually some kind of payment or payoff in mm -hmm. some format. Yes. Um, bartering is a valid form of legal tender. Yes. In our industry. And I am so incredibly thankful for that because we are all, we're all broke when we are starting. <laughs> I mean, technically, um, authors still fall under that whole starving artist kind of thing, you know? Yes, we do. So <laughs> it, it's definitely, like I was saying before, that's why a lot of authors you see work full time jobs, they do their full time mm -hmm. thing. Um, you know, Technically, the podcasting thing is my job. That's what I do. Um, but, you know, in addition to that, I try to write and I try to blog and I try, I try to do like 50 things at once. And I'm looking at my mm -hmm. schedule now and I'm going, um, 
You might be Where's girl bossing clone? a little too close to the sun, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, Did but... you order your clone from Amazon yet? Uh, <laughs> Is it they, on back order? I was going to say, do they sell those? I haven't seen one. Um... Is it available? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just get a doppelganger, please? That would be great. Uh, but yeah, like it's such a big deal to you know do so much stuff when it comes to writing your books and it's a process and you know for those who are just readers and you're like i need book two now and the authors who can get books out like back to back to back those are the mm -hmm. ones that also write them back to back to back like or writing them yeah. at the same time so when one goes to editing Book two is probably getting finished and then it's going to immediately go to editing while the other one's getting corrected and then it goes into production and then it goes to publishing. Then like a month and a half later, the other one goes into, you know, uh, formatting and then production and then about a month or so later or two or three months later, then book two's out. Like I had to ask like professional authors who are like big name. I'm like, how do you do it? Like, how do you put out a book every couple of months? Like, do you sleep? And they're like, no, I just write them all at the same time. I'm like, dude, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> that has to be. So my day job when I'm not, you know, being a romance riot chaos goblin is I work in a library. Oh, which, nice. I mean, my Venn diagram is a circle. I play with books all the time. <laughs> um, but my biggest, yeah. That has to be one of like, it, it's not like the meaning of life. That is not the biggest question. My biggest question is how do James Patterson and Daniel Steele do it? Or because they are seriously putting it out three, every three months. Yes. Um, oh, so the number crazy of, authors. The number of books that I'm putting out on the fast reads shelf um, because at our particular library system, we have a shelf of seven day borrows. It's, you can't put a hold on it. You can't renew it. It's, you have it for seven days and then you turn it back in. Um, and it's usually the hottest of hot books that just came out. And Danielle Steele will no joke have like two of them on the shelf at the same time. And it's usually, they get to be up there for like four months. Wow. And it's like, I'm, it's like, how did you do it? How have you been doing this since the 90s? Because my mama used to be a Daniel Steele mm -hmm. reader. That was mine. <laughs> I I guess low-key, I kind of cut my um, romance reading teeth on Daniel Steele and the Harlequins in the white paperbacks. Mm -hmm. The white covers with the little circle in the middle with the like oil painting photo, like picture in the middle. Yep. Because my grandma had those. Um, the big joke in my family is that um, I'm a multi-generational smut peddler. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> because <laughs> back in the day, um, when little baby me um, is was you know still in you know middle school, high school, um, hauling the books of Danielle Steele. Um, for mom from the library, um, my grandmother would get, she would get the Harlequins and her and her friends in her like little craft clubs would take the white bags that the apples came in mm -hmm. from the grocery store and you could stack the paperbacks and have like a dozen of them in the bag without like straining the seam. Mm -hmm. And so every time she went to a craft club or a knitting circle or whatever, one of those bags accompanied her. Mm -hmm. And grandma had arthritis, so someone had to carry the bag. Um, so I had started off carrying the bag at one point. And then my my eldest daughter, <laughs> when um, when we came back home, grandma was our child care for a little bit. So um she would go over to grandma's house and then grandma would be going over to, you know, walking over to craft club or whatever. And my daughter would then carry the little white bag of the white cover Harlequins <laughs> to craft club. <laughs> um, and then here I am, I'm writing the things <laughs> and 
um, while grandma's no longer with us, it's like, I feel like she would approve of all of this. I Definitely. don't necessarily want her reading my book. Um, I, I wrote my dedication and, um, and I gave it to Roz already so it could be formatted and put in the book, but it straight up has a line in there, you know, of course, you know, thanking my friends and family and all that. And it's like, I love you but please don't read these chapter numbers. <laughs> Get these. Please. <laughs> because I don't want family gatherings to be awkward. <laughs> I just tell my family, just don't read my books. It's just easier. And of hey. course, my mom's like, I want <laughs> copies of your books. No, ma'am, you don't. No, you don't. You don't. <laughs> you are a good Christian woman. No, you don't. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> no, you don't, ma'am. No, 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 no. That there is, there is <laughs> smut in them pages. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. My best friend's mom. Um, so she's kind of my sister wife. Um, we... Our daughters are the same age and we went to like college visits together because carpooling and going to college visits together, it gives you that built in somebody to talk to. And then also, you know, just kind of, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, it's being efficient. Well, we would go together and, or at least, you know, meet up at the school together and <laughs> So we'd be sitting there hanging out and talking back and forth and like her husband would be like off getting coffee and and like the alumni are circulating and they'd come up and they would talk to us like we were we were the parents of the child in question. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, we're not technically together like that or <laughs> like you think. Um <laughs> It's like, thank you for trying to be inclusive, but uh, you got the signals all wrong. <laughs> we, we appreciate the inclusivity, yes. <laughs> so now the the running joke is, um, and then we also did a um, a scout trip as a group, and her husband, herself, and me, we were the chaperones, the mm -hmm. adults, and we're traveling as a pack together, and the girls are all ahead of us. And um, we were we were in Savannah, Georgia. Um, so um, we're like going through the squares and we're walking along. We're trying to get to the Julia Gordon Low House. And um, this this gentleman off to the side who's you know trying to like you know sell his art and stuff. He looks over at her husband. They are the ones legally married. I'm 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 not attached to them. In any kind of format, but he looked. He looked at her husband and goes, "Sir, you have a beautiful family." <laughs> at which point, um, we look at each other um, because, you know, after knowing somebody for twenty years, you can have a wordless conversation just by making eye contact. Mm -hmm. And so we just kind of look at each other, like, "Did he just say what we think he said?" And so, yes. Now for the last five years I think anytime we get together it's wifey um you know can we borrow my brother husband um, <laughs> all of this so we're close we are family um they call me aunt or her girls call me aunt um my girls call her aunt is we we are the family that we wanted that um we don't don't actually share DNA and it's fine um, but um, both she and her mom read like Wanda Brunstetter, um, Amy Clipson, um, the love inspired line from Harlequin in particular. Mm -hmm. um, that's their jam. And that's perfectly fine. We all have our, not every book is for everybody. Right. And yes. we all have our preferred flavors that is theirs um they all want my book and I'm like okay so I I am I am open to this however 
I just want to make sure you know what you're getting into. <laughs> just so you, you know, there's this, dirty pages. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there's going to be things in here that you don't read in other books. <laughs> um, and what's even funnier is then my nieces, um, her daughters are also very like, we, we're getting your book, right? We, we want your book. We're buying your book. And I'm like, <laughs> like do you have to um on the plus side um i'm now the cool aunt that has um the great book racks so nice nice um, we we've maybe like you know had some inroads that direction because i'm like at first i'm like i am not going to corrupt my nieces this way <laughs> and then you turn around and they're just like we have tiktok do you have these books Right. And then you just basically become, you know, the, the dirty book dealer, which is, you know, I guess better than drugs, I but am. at the same time, mm, <laughs> you know, that's okay. We exactly. like that. We like dirty books and we, we like do. all the great book talk references. So oh, absolutely. That being said, mm -hmm. what is your favorite current read right now? Ooh. Oh, goodness. I have to pick one? You have to pick one. <laughs> one. Singular. I mean, you could give me your top three, but one would be better. So if you can't pick just one, give me your top three. Oh, no. Okay. So um, I would probably be remiss if I did not, um, if I did not name drop um, some romance riot. Um, I may or may not still have the because I save, um, I have a tendency to save like links and things mm -hmm. forever. Um, so I still have like the the link to the link tree that was the um, tan lines and TBRs. Um, it's because a great event. It was amazing. I I had some serious FOMO because. I didn't have my book ready yet, and I'm like, I want to play too. Um. And I didn't get to, but that's okay, because everybody else got to. And I thoroughly enjoyed pimping out everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, I did not get all of the buttons pushed during the freebie event, but that's fine, because that means I'm not getting your free book. I'm paying you coin for your book. Mm -hmm. So it's a win-win all the way around. And so, um, yeah, I still have the link, or the, the list. And I, I like to refer back to it periodically. Um, so let's see, Kate Prada. Um, I've, I've been still chipping away at Wraith. I love Emily. Mm -hmm. Emily is goals. She's my goals. Um, let's see here. April D. Berry, um, right next door was the cutest freaking little read ever. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and that one is out, they're actually on the mild side of, of the spice scale. So right. I, I can recommend that those all day long. And I've even recommended them at work. Um, because on occasion we get the patrons that come in and they're like eBooks all over the place. And it's like, I have, I have Kindle Unlimited too. And it's like, funny you mention Kindle Unlimited because I happen to have rundown lists of authors. Um, so definitely that, um, shoot. So many, um, so many book titles to choose from, I know. So many! <laughs> it's like, oh, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> because then I'll feel bad if somebody's like, if, if I, if I don't get to rep somebody, I'm like. I mean, to be I, fair, like there, uh, I've got like almost an entire month of interviews with just romance riot authors, so they, <laughs> they're getting repped one way or the other. If, if I miss them, somebody else might get them. So, <laughs> um, oh goodness, um, going off the riot path, um, I would, I probably would not be a a hockey romance writer worth her salt if I did not recommend Samantha Whiskey. Um, she is on Kindle Unlimited. Um, I 
I cannot deny. I'm like, I want her. I want to be her brain. <laughs> I want to be her brain. I want to know how she did this because she's got not just one team, but technically three. Oh goodness. Um, because she like she starts off her series with the Seattle Sharks, which is a team of her own making, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, you start off with um Gage who at the time is like a very seasoned veteran player and then he turns coach um but it follows like him and his teammates through the Seattle Shark system then he gets hired as the coach for the Carolina Reapers which I freaking love that team that's a great name wow it is fabulous (laughs) um and then there's a whole series of books from the players of the Carolina Reapers but she doesn't stop there. One of her players on the Reapers, his brother is a quarterback for the Rally Raptors, who is a football team not too far down the road. Um, and then there's a whole section of books there. And it's like, you have the formula. You have this figured out. Uh-huh. Um, you know who you would... All, they're all solid reads. You would probably, I don't know if you've already read them, but um, have you read the Carolina Comet series by Tegan Hunter? I haven't yet. Um, it's on my list. They're so good. It's on my list. They're, they're, um, they're books that I can read pretty much in a day because I can't put them down. And right. they're so, so good. They're not like heavy, heavy spice, but they're cutesy kind of playfully romance with some spice thrown in. And it's just, they're so good. Like, they're a great palate cleanser. I went from reading Haunting Adeline to those, which was fantastic choice on my part. Because, <laughs> whoo, I needed need a palate cleanser. We need a palate cleanser. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. I still haven't finished that one. I, I, I got haunted. I got hunting done. Or wait, no, I'm getting it backwards. Haunting was first. Hunting was second. Okay. Yeah. I got haunting done. I've. I've only dipped my toe into hunting because I it haven't got read deep. I haven't read ha- hunting yet because I'm just like, Oof. oh, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm <laughs> mentally prepared for this. <laughs> it's a lot like girl bossing way too close to the sun. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Don't get me wrong, the books yeah. are fantastic. Um, oh yeah, the, they're wonderful, but oh boy, um, I am definitely a Zade girl, but there's some stuff in book two that yeah. I'm just like. I don't know if I can handle that. Um, H.G. Carlton has a way with words. Yes. She's, she's got amazing talent. However, as much as I like to talk like I am this huge badass and I can read anything I want, <laughs> um, maybe within reason and maybe I am the soft and squishy Cancerian that I was born to be because it's like, why is it so spicy? (laughs) It's so dark. (laughs) I'm one of those people that also is like, yeah, I can read anything. And then there's some books out there that I have read that I'm like, what the fuck? (laughs) Excuse you. (laughs) I made it through Den of Vipers, but it took me like three tries. I have not read Den of Vipers, but I've heard it's like, it is a combination between really good and whoa. Um, Yes. So I'm kind of, that one's on the fence for me. I'm not sure if I'll get mm-hmm. to it. It's, it's somewhere on my TBR, but I have like 200 other books I'd read before that. Um, my girl child has, um, because my eldest, I keep trying to convince her she needs to do cover art. Um, mm-hmm. Because, you know, she's got her bachelor's in fine arts now. She loves illustration. Um, she likes drawing pretty ladies, though, and not so much dudes. So um, getting... Getting a cover out of her for a romance book is maybe not happening. However, she is a creative, and um, so she likes to make correlations between things as well. When it comes to our spice scale, um, she feels, and she feels very strongly about this, that we should use the Buffalo Wild Wings sauce scale and maybe sometimes the dry rub, because sometimes it's saucy and sometimes it's a dry rub. (laughs) And I'm like... (laughs) I made this. I created this. <laughs> that is but an she's... epic. That is an epic way to like think about that. That it it really is. 
And it seriously is. And then the sauce levels, um, from mild to, you know, to hot, you've got all of the levels. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, it works. It does I, work. I need to figure out how to make, and I should probably punish her by making her make this graphic for me, um, a way to make that kind of scale because they've got their graphic with all of their sauces and all of that. And it's like, if I make one like that, then I can sit there and go, okay, so this book would fall like this sauce level. Mm -hmm. if, And it would be a great reference point, but I'm sure they would probably want coinage if they tried to use their image. You would, you would have to find, maybe instead of using the sauces, maybe use different kinds of peppers and their Scoville levels. Yes. That would probably be the better way to do that. Be like, hey, this is a Carolina Reaper spice. <laughs> yes. Um, Deno Vipers would definitely fall in that Carolina Reaper ghost pepper level. It's a lot. It's okay. a lot. And you can't get it out from under your fingernails once you get in there. Um, so you have to be careful with that one. <laughs> Another great book, Rick, that I will always recommend is Priest by Sierra Simone. Have you oh read that? Oh my God, yes. Yes. I made um, my husband read that book. Like literally I was sitting there going and I was like, whew, like I had to close the book several times and I'm like, did I just read that? Oh my God. Yes, you did. And then I would open it back up and he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, when I finish this book, you are going to read it. And he's like, um, I am. And I said, yeah, you are. And then he got done with it and he was like, the holy oil scene. I will never look uh -huh. at anything like that uh -huh. ever the same again. I was like, I know, right? <laughs> uh, so if funny. anybody hasn't read that book, that's a great one. Um, also, a funny story on that one. <laughs> uh, everybody who's listening, we have mentioned a lot of books. I have a character limit on the, the uh, episode, so all of the book recs will not be in the show description. There will only be a set amount of them in the show description. Uh, just listen carefully and take notes. That's all I'm going to tell you because mm. I can't fit them all. We've talked about a lot. And I mean, this is a book podcast. Just take notes and add them to your TBRs. It's cool. Anyway, um, carry on. <laughs> oh, no worries. So um, if you have not listened to Priest, Go back and listen to the audiobook. My one of my best friends listened to Priest, and uh, I, I got Morgan. I, I got all of the the highlights of mm -hmm. uh, the audiobook from him, and it was great. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes. Also, ladies, have your husbands read the dirty books. Trust me. Yes. You'll you'll I thank have... us for that. You'll thank us for that. I have mine. <laughs> listening to J.R. Ward Black Dagger Brotherhood right now. Oh, that's a great book series. It was a kind of a weird little um a weird little journey for him. He only does audiobooks. Mm -hmm. He he prefers to listen, not to read, but it is a valid form of reading. Yes. Um and so <laughs> technically um he started like his audiobook fandom with like Halo, you know, cuz does video games it's mm -hmm. fine then he took kind of a weird like sharp right into uh sarah j mass a court of thorn and roses he loved the dramatic narration which has like clanging swords and like crackling fires and stuff in the background um he went through all of her backlist actually he told me if i ever do a book signing and she's there he will totally come along with me and i'm like what did the last 24 years of my life give us? <laughs> <laughs> that is the level of commitment we have. Great. <laughs> um, but he ran through her backlist and KF Breen and because her books were recommended on the back end of Sarah J. Mass book. Uh, and then he had like this book hangover and he's like, what do I do now? And I had just finished listening to Darius, which technically is the prequel Mm -hmm. um, if you look at it on Goodreads, it's listed as 0. 0.5 um, before Dark Lover. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, you can listen to this one. They All of the guys talk like, you know, action movie dudes. So it's not like a traditional romance. And I think you might like it. Um, and he also likes vampires. Um, he is now like all the way through the series. That's awesome. Um, 
such a I'm I mean, impressed at him. Pretty much J.R. Ward, you really can't go wrong with any of her books because they're all awesome. So, um, and if you want to go really old school, Christine Feehan. Yeah. Um, I, she's I love, next. I love the Carpathian series by Christine Feehan. Mm -hmm. All of them. Just all of them. I've told him to go there next because he's like, I have to wait until like January for the next book. Um, well, sorry. Dems to break. <laughs> Welcome to Book Hangover. Um, drinks are on the left. Support group meeting is on Tuesday. Um, and I'm like, you know, but you could try, you know, this other author who has a very, very, very long backlist and see what happens. Um, so I think she may be next. I'm trying to catch up to him and it's not working. Um, I've given up trying to keep my husband and I used to be reading dates and he reads so fast. And for a while I was keeping up with him, but then my schedule got busy. And so I didn't get a chance to keep up with him. And now he's like 35 books ahead of me. And I'm like, dude, really? And he's like, That's what? That's just disrespectful. And he's just like, <laughs> you should read this book series. And I said, I haven't finished this series that we were reading together. And he's like, okay, you should also read this series. And I said, well, I haven't finished the other series. I haven't even started the one you just recommended. And yeah, so by the time we get done yeah. to all of it, he's just like, um, I left some notes for you on the Kindle, so you could do that because he has his own Kindle and we share the Aww. KU account. So he's like, read this one, read this one, read this one. And I was like, I have like 45 other books I have to read for like interviews and such. So um, right. <laughs> I'll, I'll get to it. I don't know. Sometime before I'm dead. You know what? That's what I need. I need. We need to get to the cyborg part of life. So that way I yes. can just continue reading after I'm supposed to expire. That's what I Either need. Either the cyborg or the vampires need to come out of the coffin. So that way we can like. I, I already live, live like a vampire. So it works. So yeah. You're already accustomed to the sleep schedule. So yeah. there would be like zero. Or at least a very little transition. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'm allergic it's, to like 90% of food, so just give me something that I can, you know, feed off of. That's fine. There, yeah, there you go. go. I'm good. See, yeah. we've got we've got the answers. We just need the logistics. And you know, if that doesn't work, I would totally go werewolf. That would be fine with me too. I wouldn't mind. You That's know. a valid uh, that is a valid substitute. Yeah. So I'm down with that. <laughs> whichever, <laughs> you know, we've got aliens now and now let, let's just get the rest of the fant fantasy creatures in. So Yeah, just, let's do this. Come on. I mean we know you're out there. We have all of the book series. Let's go. Um, yeah, because I have so many book series that are, um, my Goodreads is, which I will friend everyone and anyone who friends me on Goodreads, I swear. I have, it's an equal opportunity list. <laughs> um, but it's, it's sad looking because like, I will show it off because I'm like, look, um, I have probably very fairly substantial red list but my to be read list is uh, or one to read list is like it's approaching 3000 oh my gosh and here like my amazon list that's my to be read is like i don't know maybe like 300 deep <laughs> well part of the problem is like i'm i'm a pretty active participant in doing the stuff your kindle events gotcha yeah i may not go back and actually read them or i'm i say that i will but then i get distracted by bright and shiny things because that's what i do um, that's the adhd brain <laughs> <laughs> tell yeah tell everyone that you are um spicy brained on all 80 of the hds with um without actually saying that you have all 80 of the hds yeah it's right like there. oh look you have all the books yes but i don't want to touch any of them right now because i'm currently hyper fixated on this book that's also exactly. part of the tism brain. So <laughs> the it's a the Venn diagram is a circle. Yes. <laughs> Again. Yes. Yes. It is. So we are just oh, about goodness. out of time, and I know you and I could totally chat forever. So you're gonna just have to come back, and we're gonna have oh, to talk we more. Could. Um, the amount of time we can chat within the Discord as well. Exactly. Um, right. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Where can people find you on social media? How can they connect with you? Um, and do you have, I'm assuming you probably don't because your book's just now coming out, but if you have any events coming up, 
talk about Ooh. them as well. Okay, so I am, I am on. Let's see, I'm on the Instagram as um, Eden Knox Wright. I do have my own website because I was a big girl and I went ahead and nailed that down. Um, so that's um, EdenKnoxAuthor.com. Um, I'm on Twitter as Eden Knox Author. Um, I do have my own Facebook page. Um, and then I have my link tree on all of the above. So if you find me on one, you can then find me on all of them. Um, and yes, tripping for, num tripping for number 68 is up for presale um, until the 8th. And then it will be up on Kindle Unlimited and available for purchase as ebook and then also as a paperback um, shortly thereafter. Yay! I love that. Oh my god, I've <laughs> never done that before. Let's go. <laughs> Yay, we're going to get all the good stuff. Um so if you are a hockey romance fan or just wanting to support Eden, make sure you go and get a copy of Tripping for number 68. And if you are a KU user and you want to wait until after the 8th to do that, absolutely do that as well. Um, also, after you read the book, please review it because reviews help your authors more than you know. And you can take that same review, copy and paste it on Goodreads or everywhere else you want, Barnes and Noble, wherever you want, wherever you want to buy your book from, just go copy and paste it everywhere because those reviews yeah. help the authors way more than we can even begin to talk about so make sure you do that and if you are somebody who is like i can't afford the book and i can't afford ku go to your local library they probably won't have a copy ask them to request to get a copy if they cannot find it at another library they will purchase a copy specifically for the library so you can check it out it may take a little bit but it will happen so also support your local libraries, everybody. Well, Yay. Eden, this has been an absolute blast. You're going to have to come back so we can talk more because obviously you and I could talk forever. And oh, absolutely. <laughs> everybody who is listening, uh, there will be several links in the show description. Make sure you check all of those out. Give Eden a follow. Check out the book. And everyone, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Be kind to each other. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.